Hello everyone, welcoming you to Shorup Sir's classes. And today we are looking at the IIT JAM Economics 2023 paper question number 11. So we consider a two agent, two good exchange economy where agent I has utility function ui of xi yi is max of xi comma yi. The initial endowments of good x and good y are given by this vector over here. Then select the correct choice below where the price vector specified is a part of competitive equilibrium. So let us write down the important information once more. The utility function is given as ui xi comma yi is equals to max of xi yi. This is the utility function. For individual one, the endowments are x1 bar and y bar, which is 25,5. And for individual two, the endowments are x2 bar, comma y2 bar, which is equals to 5,5. Comma five. So that means the total endowment of good X is X1 bar plus X2 bar, which is 30. And the total endowment of good Y is Y1 bar plus Y2 bar, which is equals to 10. All right. Okay. Since the utility function looks identical in both cases, we can have a simple graph to understand how this utility function would look like. So this is your good x, xi, this is your yi, correct. Now if you look at the utility function max of xi, yi, then this will be equals to xi when xi greater than yi. And this will be equals to yi when yi greater than xi. So that means again the break will happen at the point xi is equals to yi. So this is my xi equals to yi line. The upper part implies yi greater than xi and this will imply xi greater than yi. So the shape of the indifference curves would be inverted L shaped. Okay. This is how your indifference curves would look like. This is how your ICs would look like. The question over here is that we have identical utility functions for both the individuals. We are told to find the competitive, the price vector specified that will qualify for a competitive equilibrium. Now, obviously, this being a general equilibrium question is preferred to be drawn by using an Edgeworth box, but this can be also done intuitively. Note that since the utility functions are identical, check in this way. The price vector, the competitive price vector is basically defined as that price which basically clears the market, right? So over here we have two goods, good X and good Y. So the, we are trying to find out that price where the demand for good X would be equals to the supply of good X. The demand for good Y would be equals to supply of good Y, okay? So that means we want to find out or at optimal, that's better to write down, P1 star would be defined as that price where the optimal X demanded by individual 1 and 2 would add up to this and P2 star would be that competitive price where Y1 star plus Y2 star would be basically giving you omega y. Now check over here. 
given the budget line of any individual, the price ratio would be P1 by P2. So if the price ratio is lesser than 1, so the budget line would be flatter in this way and the optimal would be obtained at this point. So this is the case where P1 by P2 is lesser than 1. And on the other hand, if the price ratio is greater than 1, then the price line would look something like this. And if you pull it to the left, this is where your optimal would take place. So this is the case for P1 by P2 greater than 1. So if you look at either of the cases, we are having a corner solution. So if you look at the first case where P1 by P2 lesser than 1 or P1 lesser than P2, both the individuals will be preferring to buy only good one or X and no one will want to buy good Y. So the market for good Y will not clear. So P1 lesser than P2 cannot be a comparative, cannot comprise a comparative price equilibrium. On the other hand, if you go to the second extreme case where both the consumers are demanding only good Y that is happening when P1 is greater than P2. So if both the consumers are demanding only good Y then good X uh, the market for good X is not clearing as a result of which P1 greater than P2 also cannot comprise a competitive equilibrium. Therefore the competitive equilibrium can only be comprised by those set of prices where P1 star is equals to P2 star. Okay. And if you look at the options, it is given by option B. Where both the prices are equals to 2 and 2. Thank you. Now let us come to question number 12 of the IIT JAM 2023 economics paper. For a firm operating in a perfectly competitive market, which of the following is correct? Profit function is convex and homogeneous of degree 1. Profit function is concave and homogeneous of degree 1. Profit function is convex but not homogeneous. Neither concave nor convex. So it's basically we need to un understand the properties of the profit function. Okay, so let us get into how we derive the profit function. So let us say that uh, there are two, the production function is Q as a function of labor and capital and the cost of production is WL plus RK. Okay, so the profit function would be price into quantity minus WL minus RK. The objective of the firm is to choose L and K to maximize profit. So it will do, do del pi by del L is equals to 0 and del pi by del K is equals to 0. So that will become P times del F by del L minus w is equals to 0 and p times del f by del k minus r is equals to 0 right so from here we get p times del f by del l is equals to w and from here we get p times del f by del k is equals to r and dividing this we get our very standard result del f by del l is mpl del f by del k is mpy is equals to w by r and using this optimization condition and the production function we solve for the optimal value of l star which depends upon p w and r because these are the three parameters for the firm and k star which is also depending upon p w and r correct so if we replace this in the profit expression we are basically get function of l star which is p w and r 
comma function of k star which is p w n r minus w l star p w n r minus r k star which is the function of p w n r so essentially the entire expression becomes a function of p w and r so this is the profit function the maximized value of the profit for any given level of p w and r indicates the profit function okay so if i write it in a more compact way it is basically p star p function of l star comma k star minus w l star minus r k star correct so now if you increase all the prices by the same factor lambda the commodity price the factors price which is lambda w making the rental rate as lambda r so this is essentially becoming lambda times pi star right so that means the profit function is homogeneous of degree 1 in prices so that means it is homogeneous of degree 1 in prices okay so essentially your option would be either 1 or 2 these are the two things from which we need to choose so now the question is that whether your profit function would be convex or concave now we need to check for the concavity or convexity so let us start in this way suppose we consider a set of prices p1 w1 r1 in that case let's say the optimal amount of profit is given by pi1 star so that would be p1 into function of l1 star comma k1 star minus w1 l1 star minus r k1 star and let us consider another set of prices p2 w2 and r2 and in that case the optimal profit be denoted by pi2 star which is given by p2 function of l2 star comma k2 star comma w2 l2 star minus r2 k2 star okay now let us consider a convex combination of these two prices so let's say i consider theta p1 plus 1 minus theta p2 where theta lies between 0 and 1 and similarly a same convex combination of the wages as well r1 1 minus theta r2 let's say for notation purpose we denote this as p3 this as w3 this as r3 so when the prices are p3 w3 and r3 let's say the optimal amount is denoted by pi3 star so that would be p3 function of l3 star k3 star minus w3 l3 star minus r3 k3 star correct so if you replace the expressions for p3 w3 and r3 that is theta p1 plus 1 minus theta p2 function of l3 star comma k3 star minus theta w1 plus 1 minus theta w2 l3 star minus theta r1 plus 1 minus theta r2 k3 star okay so if we group all the terms with theta in one place so that would be p1 function of l3 star comma k3 star minus w1 l3 star minus r1 
k3 star and similarly grouping all the 1 minus theta terms together so that would give you p2 function of l3 star comma k3 star minus w2 l3 star minus r2 k3 star correct Now, if you look at the first third bracketed term together, this is basically the profit when the prices are P1, W1 and R1, but the firms decide to employ L3 star and K3 star amount of labor and capital. And we have already defined above that when the price combination is P1, W1 and R1, the highest amount of profit or the optimal profit is given by pi 1 star when the firm employs L1 star and K1 star amount of capital. So this third bracketed term over here is definitely less than pi 1 star. And similarly by the similar logic if you look at the second bracket this component over here where the price vector is P2, W2 and R2. So this one is definitely lesser than pi 2 star. So that means this entire quantity on the right side is lesser than theta times pi 1 star plus 1 minus theta pi 2 star. Okay. So this implies that it is convex in prices. So that means your correct option is option A. Profit function is convex and homogeneous of degree 1 in prices. Thank you.